Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. I did a couple of videos recently about pop chord progressions, and I realized looking at them that every one of those progressions had the one chord of the key in it. And I, thinking about it today, I realized, hey, there's tons of great progressions which somehow manage to avoid the one chord. We're still in a scale, and yet the one never appears. <laughs> My, one of my students yesterday said, what about that Steve Lacey song, uh, Bad Habit? So we worked it out. It's interesting to me because the chord progression um, kind of flows down and back up, like so. I'm playing it off the F major seven chord. I think he plays it off um, C sharp major seven. But in any case, what just happened there is an example of what I'm talking about. So F major 7, and then down a half step to a minor 7 chord, down a whole step to a minor 7 chord. I just basically played F major 7, E minor 7, D minor 7, back up. It's a very sort of soul sonic or 70s sound, isn't it? I mean, I feel super comfortable with that. The tune never resolves to... Well, here, hold on a second. To C, it never goes home to what is essentially the tonic of the scale. And the result is, check this out, I'll, I'll play what I was just playing. That's F Lydian. down to sort of D Dorian. It's very jazzy in a beautiful way. I'm super excited by a tune when I discover it like that. There's not a lot to recommend the song beyond that beautiful sort of harmonic place that it lives in. Well, let's think of a few others too. Well, you know, I said at the top that uh, the examples that I gave uh, were all had the tonic in it, but I was wrong because the F, G, E minor, A minor chord progression, which, you know, is the Royal Road progression, doesn't have the C in it either, right? It just goes on and on. N never goes to C. No tonic, no C anywhere in there. We're doing all of this in C because it's easier to think of it this way. Um... So in jazz, there's this important thing. Two, five, one, right? But there's tons of examples of um, music where you just kind of live between those two chords. I mean, in that context, the D really sounds like the center. And in fact, D Dorian is going to be a sort of a modal place for it. And I guess that takes us to the basic idea that I'm trying to get across, which is that all of these non-tonic, non-home chord progressions are essentially modal. And that modal sound can be really, really beautiful. I love this sense of being in a space, maybe the verse or the bridge, and just not having the tonic chord in it. So uh, two minor seven to three. Just sitting between those two chords, you hear the C scale. but you never actually get it. And it gives this sense of forward propulsion. Now, all the pairings have a signature sound. Four, major seven, of course, F major seven up to G seven. Th 
the last thing I want to draw your attention to is is the axis that's not along the the major seven chord that's built on the root of the scale, but rather the axis that's along the minor seven chord built on the second step of the scale, and then maybe the C, because the that chord sequence in any of those pairs can be very very interesting. Here, A minor seven. F major 7, D minor. All those notes sort of are in that stack, aren't they? They all are sort of living in that stack there, in a kind of a great way. I kind of love that. Let's go in the opposite direction. D minor, F, A. It almost sounds like the chord doesn't change. But it still feels like a chord progression. I'd argue that that's not really a chord progression as, it, as so much as it is a kind of a sonority. I'm particularly interested, and I think you know this after I've been talking about it so often, in non-tonic dominant relationships. And if you take the one chord out of the equation completely, the tonic dominant relationship disappears. There is no tonic. You can have a dominant chord. You can have a G7 chord. And yet, it doesn't really have any place to go. And there's something really great about that because the sonority then becomes about the vertical as opposed to the horizontal. It becomes about the immediate sonic impression rather than about the narrative. Tension and release is still really important and we wanna have good melodies and we wanna have a good build and a good arrangement, but it doesn't have to flow from the inexorable return to the tonic chord. I think that if you listen to songs with an ear for this question, you'll discover that many tunes use something like this, if not in the entire song, then in sections. It's a great technique for a verse because it propels you forward, propels you forward, propels you forward. Well, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.